Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to a new Stranger Vlog. It's been near two months since New York Comic Con, and I haven't had a chance to make this video. Well, now that I got a new phone, just like my other Stranger Vlog, I have a chance to actually do this one. Um, this New Year, Year's New York Comic Con was pretty fun, it was pretty awesome. So uh, I'm going to decide to show you the stuff that I got. Well, first and foremost, let me show you the bags they were giving out. Uh, there was a pretty big presence for sci-fi at New York Comic Con this year. Um, oddly enough, they weren't promoting any particular show in general, just sort of like a sci-fi brand. Uh, so they were giving out these bags each morning. Uh, they had these, each bag was like a different color. And then the logos, or like a little saying on the back, what does that say? Uh, Shipping has nothing to do with the mail. And these little adjustable straps, so you can make it into a book bag if you like. And, uh, or you can hand the handles, so you can do it the traditional way. But it's pretty cool. And the bags almost look like, I don't want to say insulated, but, uh, you know, they look like they could take a beating. And they even have little side pockets over here if you wanted to, like, put your posters and stuff like that, so they can straight up, uh, samurai style. Alright, so... Before I go dig into the bag, uh, it's New York Comic Con. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get too many comic books per se out there enough. Um, but just going through my stuff, I just had, you know, this Supergirl versus Jesse Quick. Um, it's basically just a Snickers ad. Uh, Adventure Time, Scooby Doo team up with the uh, Martian Manhunter. Uh, but the, the one of the better ones that I got was uh, DC Comics. Uh, DC's Dark Knight Metal. Uh, this was actually autographed by Scott Snyder. I had a chance to meet the artist Greg Capullo uh, twice already at Comic-Con. Not at this particular Comic-Con. He was there even though I had, didn't have a chance to meet him. Um, but also on the back if, I can, if you can see these uh, they have these um, it's a Joker card. Uh, on one end, on the other end it was sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a tarot card theme? And like, so these are different tarot cards. Uh, this one says Gaia, which is, and then it's sort of Poison Ivy. So I don't know what they're doing with that, with the tarot cards and the DC Metal stuff. Um, but at least, like, that's an issue one, Scott, signed by Scott Snyder, the writer. All right, so let me go into my bag of goodies and see what we have. Now, what happens is, is I, I started to do this video before, and I realized I wasn't even recording. So <laughs> I'm basically going to repeat myself. All right, here's a neat little dealie for Amazon Prime's The Tick, and I got a chance to interview Peter Serafinowicz, the guy who plays The Tick. I got a chance to interview uh, Jackie Earl Haley, who plays The Terror on that show. Unfortunately, both those interviews, uh, the audio went to garbage, so I didn't have a chance to actually pl post those videos, but uh, sort of a, a, a tick. It's sort of a, a blue poncho. Uh, so I guess... If you're protected by the poncho, you're protected by the tick. I don't know if it has to do with anything with the Danger Boat character. Because that was the... When you went to Comic-Con, uh, you had you got a chance to go on the Danger Boat. Uh, and it was nice. that had a little, little camera moving, acting like the actor. And there was someone doing the voice. And he would interact with you. And that was pretty neat. That was, that was cool. Um, so while I still have the tick on my mind... Um, they had this deal uh, <laughs> when you're on a danger boat called Foham, and uh, I guess you know, sort of like a version of Spam. Uh, if you remember their, the character in the, in the show uh, Crossbones or whatever his name was, he was eating this. And then in the actual bag itself, uh, the actual can itself had these little tick pins that say uh, neat and tick face. And uh, I, I just put, oh, I didn't put it. Uh, Sci-Fi was giving out these candies. I think I have one of those in my bag. Basically, just lemon drops. And once again, they had they had big, long lines where they can. Sci-Fi were, were giving out basically, and I I think I did the math, and they had they had given out about ten to twenty thousand t-shirts, where they were silk screening them right then and there. I could have sworn I had a t-shirt around here somewhere with the Sci-Fi logo. It wasn't going to fit me because it was an extra large, but I grabbed one anyway. Because there was a time where they just got so frust not frustrated, but they were just they were just tossing into the crowd. Okay, so here's a hat for the show Explosion Jones. It's on the El Rey Network. 
um, which is Robert Rodriguez's network, and it had Carl Weathers, uh, Michael Madsen, Vivica A. Fox, they're all doing voices. It's sort of a, a spoof of 80s action movies, but just like ridiculous animation. It's a trucker cap, so I don't know if it's supposed to be like retro 80s style. Um, but yeah, it's called Explosion Jones. I think the, the episodes are also available online, like legitimately available online. And they're, they're cute. They're like little three minute episodes. They're pretty funny. Um, let me see. What else? Oh, this is from Mr. Robot. Let me see if I can find the other items that came along with it. Uh, Mr. Robot, the if you watch the show, there's a corporation called the E Corporation or Evil Corporation, and uh, they were they had a presence in the show. They were promoting their thing called E Coin. Forgive me as I'm not on camera looking for the stuff. Well, I'll find it later. Um, eCoin, which is basically uh, like a Bitcoin for their universe. But what it was is, you know, you put the app on your phone, you sign up for eCoin, and it's like, oh, you can go to such and such place and get like a free sandwich or something like that. So it was these, uh, these like 80s style sunglasses, a bank of E lanyard. I want to say this is sort of like real run of the mill uh, swag, which I don't know if that was on purpose that they were doing. Um, like, you know, stuff a, a bank would give away thinking, you know, I mean, hey, it's a bag. I collected it, so I guess it's not that bad. Okay, here's a chance to look at the actual um, program. Uh, you know, with the Avengers and Captain Marvel on the cover. Looks pretty awesome. You know, really, I mean, the program's a program. There's really nothing much more to it. Uh, oh, this was pretty neat. Uh, Nickelodeon 90s uh, from the Nicktoons. Uh, a slap bracelet. You know, kids before there were fidget spinners, there were slap bracelets in the 90s. And I remember when these were actually banned from school because they were so dangerous. Um, all right, so I got a chance to meet Chris Gore of, uh, you know, uh, Attack of the Show. Hold on, I just had it in my hand and it fell out. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so here is the first six pages of the new DC uh, Watchmen. Justice League crossover, uh, Doomsday Clock, the first six pages. I went to a panel where Jeff Johns uh, actually kind of uh, went through the first six pages. And uh, with that, uh, he kind of describes page to page what's going on here, the return of the Watchmen. It sort of takes place in, in 1992, years after um, the Watchmen end, but also coincidentally the year um, Spider uh, Superman was killed. So uh, they're gonna try to link, even those two separate universes, and once again, I had a chance to meet Chris Gore, and uh, the funny thing is he had sent me an email on Twitter, uh, a message on Twitter promoting his Kickstarter or whatever, and I thought it was just like a, a, a randomly computer-generated email. I sent back something nasty, and he wrote back, so surprisingly enough, uh, him and I interacted for a little while, so I told him about that, and he kind of remembers it. So he, he gave me this uh, sticker, Film Threat Sucks, Film Threat is sort of his deal, from Attack of the Show and DVD Tuesday, and... Uh, uh, film Threat Magazine is uh, here's a Sword Art Online. This is just a memo pad. We got a chance to meet with these Japanese uh, game developers from Banco Nam Namco Bandai, and uh, they were promoting their their game Naruto Burudo, which I have something for that in the bag also. And it's an online game, beautifully made. If you're into that, uh, if you follow that universe, um, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It's sort of like an action RPG uh, deal. Oh, and here we go. Naruto Burudo Ninja Voltage. Um, it's a, like I said, a cool action RPG. Uh, once again, back to the Mr. Robot stuff. Bank of E, sort of like a, a little dealie where you put your cell phone, you put, like you would stick this to your cell phone backing or whatever, and you put like your wallet and you put your ID and credit cards and stuff like that so you can keep it with your cell phone. Sort of a deal. Okay, once again, the Sword Art Online sort of 80s vintage sunglasses uh, once again for that video game because I believe they also had a Sword Art Online video game. They weren't discussing that with us that particular day, but it's out there. Okay, Amazon Prime once again has a, has a show called Lore, which was supposed to be like a horror anthology series if I understand correctly. So it's sort of, this was sort of just a, a book of stories. I don't know if it's, I don't know if these are actually episodes. But it's just stuff to, uh, it's more creepy stuff to look at if you're a fan of that stuff. Um, 
I kind of like this one, even though it's not really my cup of tea. Uh, Jesus Loves Gamers, uh, GameChurch.com, or Jesus Heart Game, and then the heart here sort of looks like the retro Legend of Zelda heart. Uh, so Jesus Loves Gamers.com or GameChurch.com. That's pretty cool. I mean, not my thing, but I, you know, I, I, I find that pretty neat. And here's a, sort of like a, a deal about that Game Church deal. And uh, once again, I said Sci-Fi was giving out candies also. This is sort of just like a lemon drop. It says it's a fan thing on it. And... Oh. Thou shalt take a free swag. Um, a Justice League Batarang. Uh, I saw Justice League about two weeks ago. Enjoyed it. Even though I'm people giving it a lot of... People talking smack about it, but I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, let me see what else. Once again, so that Mr. Robot thing, a sort of a keychain uh, bottle opener. Once again, sort of like run of the mill swag. I don't know if they were doing that, but it's supposed to be like a meta thing where it's goofing on swag by giving you real generic swag. Crunchyroll wristband. Crunchyroll sort of like an anime streaming service. I think I got one of those last year. Uh, this was the, my, my tick lore Amazon Prime badges sort of helped me get on the, uh, the events even though when I went to go to the lore event the lore booth uh, thing it wasn't it was down that night that particular night Thursday was horrible for some reason Thursday didn't have anything up and running and then Friday everything was in full swing a uh, webtoon webtoon's been pretty much part of their comic con for the past couple of years as I've been going they've actually made the lanyard this year a little webtoon logo once and these were the ones that were like giving out like for free. They had them in big giant like fish tanks. And then sort of like what I did is, uh, I, I like to collect the buttons. Most of these are DC buttons. Um, I put it on the, the GameChurch.com lanyard just because it's something different. Um, you know, just sort of run of the mill. Aquaman, DC, Wonder Woman, Superman. The big this one looks the, the Doomsday Clock one. It's nice and heavy. It's sort of like enameled. Um, I like this one the most. Luckily, the people that were working there didn't care. So when I left the when I left the panel, I asked if I could take a couple more. I literally grabbed like two handfuls and shoved them in my cargo short pockets. <laughs> um, DC logo, Batman, sort of the Greg Capullo style Batman, Green Lantern, VRV, which is also another uh, streaming site, sort of like Crunchyroll, which is anime, but I think they also have a bunch of the CISO old shows, like comedy um, content for online. Uh, I Heart Comic Shops, another more cheap, chintzier version of the Doomsday Clock button with the Superman logo at the top, DC logo, my blank New York Comic Con, so like my first New York Comic Con, my second, they had a couple ones that actually had like my first, my second, my third, but you could actually write that one on marker, uh, Vertigo Comics, which I believe is an imprint of DC, uh, Jesus Loves Gamers button, and Mad Magazine, you know, I like to collect all the buttons and put them on a the lanyard. So, um, not a lot of, like, super cool stuff this year, um, but then again, I was running around doing a bunch of interviews, so, um, I didn't really have a chance to just run around and collect swag, um, so that was my haul for this year, thank you for watching, don't be a stranger.